Hi, good morning everyone. I'm Tobias from Transurban, working as area manager on the Westgate Tunnel project in the tunnel zone. And I'm Desi Arni, senior project engineer from the CPB joint, John Holland joint venture. Thanks Desi, and like everyone else involved in Open House Melbourne and Victoria in general, we quickly changed our plan to suit restrictions in Victoria. While we won't be taking you on site for a tour of the westbound tunnel exit, we're excited to give you a sneak peek of what's going on as you drive down the Westgate Freeway and what it'll look like when it's complete. We'll share some interesting insights about the construction of this section of the tunnel and also have a, some behind the scenes footage of where the tunnel boring machine will be retrieved at the end of its, of its drive. A few weeks back, we sent a cameraman into our westbound tunnel zone and you'll be seeing some of the footage that uh, as part of our tour today as we both take you on a tour of never seen before footage into one of the tunnel exits for the Westgate Tunnel Project. So the Westgate Tunnel Project will provide a second river crossing for Melbourne's west. Motorists will have a choice between the new tunnel or using the existing Westgate Bridge. Our westbound exit portal is in Altona North. It sits just to the south side of the existing freeway and it's where our tunnel, our outbound tunnel, will resurface and cars will come back to join the, the surface freeway. The CPD John Holland Joint Venture started construction at the westbound portal in 2018 with clearing and preparation work for the site before we started excavation in November 2018. We started excavation from the freeway level down to the um, underside of the existing excavation level using the conventional bottom-up method of the cut and cover structure to prepare the permanent structures which are built from the ground up towards different levels which we will visit shortly. So Desi and I are going to walk you through the site virtually today and we'll start with a look at the collector distributor. So the collector distributor is a surface road that goes through our site at the western tunnel exit. The collector distributor collects vehicles that are heading westbound at Williamstown Road and the new on-ramp that we're building at High Street. It carries them west and merges them with the, with the westbound freeway lanes just to the west of the tunnel exit portal. So the main features of the collector distributor at our portal site here are the collector distributor bridge, which you can see bridges over an excavation that we've built to retrieve the, the TBM. This section of the bridge is the largest span for, for this bridge. It's 37 metres in span and all up it weighs about 80 tonnes. So the, the beams that formed the bridge were precast off site and then we used special heavy haulage vehicles to bring them to site and they were craned in, into position. Now if I were standing on the collector distributor bridge at the moment, it gives you a great overview of our western tunnel exit site and you can also part of the works we're doing on the freeway, including our new and improved noise walls. So we're delivering more than nine kilometres of new noise walls as part of the job and that'll mean quieter homes, backyards and parks along the Westgate Freeway. We've developed a noise standard specifically for the project that responds to the unique noise issues and community needs along the project's route. The design of the noise walls have been um, inspired by the rolling hills of the Yuyangs just to the west of Melbourne, traditional country of the Wadawaran people. This is just one of the ways we've incorporated Indigenous culture and history into the design of the project. We'll tell you about another way we've done that shortly. And now I'll throw over to Desi who's going to take us through the design of the portal roof and particularly the eel net. Okay guys, now we are up on the roof level of the tunnel structure um, where the great views are we can be seeing front to the Melbourne. Um, we have currently reached this level recently. Um, to date we have poured close to 20,000 meter cube of concrete to form the structure that you have seen today on the footage. Um, they are made up of various um, poured in place and prefabricated concrete segments. Our prefabricated segments are manufactured at various locations, including Coffs Harbour, as well as local suppliers in Laverton and Echuca. This is purely to keep up with the demand of the precast units so that we can install them as we need it. At the daylight end of the portal, as you will drive out of the tunnel, 
you will see an important architectural feature. The structure is called the eel net and has been inspired by a form of nets and traps used by the Aboriginal ancestors to catch eels, which historically is an important Indigenous food source found locally. The iconic eel net structure will stand proud for generations and it will be a lasting and important reminder of the Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung, Bun Wurrung and Buna Wurrung people's strong connection to the land and our shared history as millions of motorists pass through them in years to come. And now Toby is going to take us through the open trough. Thanks very much, Desi. So we're here in the open trough section of the portal now. The open trough is, is a U-shaped section of the portal. It's essentially an extension of the cut and cover. The only difference is we don't put a permanent roof on here. So it's where you'll um, be able to look up and see the sky and the eel net if you're coming out of the tunnel. So first of all, looking west, you may get a sense of the preparatory works required to enable the permanent structures to be built. So what we've done here is we've excavated and uh, installed the ground support, which includes over 10,000 soil nails and rock bolts, as well as shotcrete, which retains the earth and enables us to build the permanent walls inside that. Behind us here, you can see uh, some of the works that are happening also on the Westgate Freeway. So on the freeway, we're building four extra lanes between the M80 and the Westgate Tunnel. We've obviously got the tunnel exit and entry portals, which um, fall very close to the freeway as well. We're doing interchange upgrades at the M80 Ring Road, at Grieve Parade, at Millers Road and Williamstown Road. And we're also building new ramps at Hyde Street, which will connect trucks directly with the local industry and enable us to get trucks off the local roads. So now we're gonna head deeper inside the portal and we're gonna take a look at the cut and cover with Desi. Thanks, Toby. Um, we're now underneath the cut and cover portal um, at the moment. And the cut and cover structure really forms in three levels. At the deepest end of the portal where we will, is where we will dismantle and retrieve the TBM after it has completed its tunneling operations. The main carriageway you see as we are walking through the tunnel, this is where you will drive out of tunnel towards the daylight and it is called the road level. Above the road levels, we have two additional levels um, specifically designed for the ventilation of the entire tunnel drive. The ventilation outlet and separate smoke extraction units will be housed under the ventilation building. Um, the building itself will sit above the roof level um, is, and is approximately 45 metre high vent outlet. Um, and it will sit adjacent to the eel net structure and will be architecturally complemented to suit. At the moment above us, there are over 400 precast unit segments that we have already installed to complete the different levels of the portal. Um, to accommodate the site arrangements, we have set up a 350 ton crawler crane plus a 200 ton super lift, which makes up about 600 ton of crane each to install these units. As you may have seen it as you travel past on the Westgate freeway over the last few months. Desi, I love those, those big circular voids in the roof at the moment. So they're where the fans will eventually sit. Unfortunately, we have to fill those with ventilation fans, but at the moment, they remind me of uh, the Pantheon in Rome with that big circle void in the roof and the light coming through. And now Toby will take you through the TBM breakthrough and retrieval area. Thanks, Desi. This area, the TBM breakthrough and retrieval area, is my favourite spot in the portal. It's where you get a really great sense of the scale of what's being built down here. So the excavation level is more than 30 metres below the freeway above. Um, and it has to be that deep because our TBMs are, are, are quite huge, you know, they're 15.6 metres diameter. So we've got two TBMs. Um, we've named both of them. The, their names are B Bella and Vida. So Bella Gurin was the first woman to graduate from the University in Australia in, nine, in sorry, 1883, and went on to teach at Loretto Convent in Ballarat. And the second TBM, Vida, is named after Vida Goldstein. She was a groundbreaking campaigner for women's rights, establishing the right for females to vote and stand for election. So both of our, we've got two TBMs, both of them are launched from our northern portal, which is up near the Maribyrnong River. The, uh, the longer drive is the outbound drive, which is the one that we'll um, 
or the, west, or the westbound drive is the one that will break through here. Um, so the TBMs, uh, they excavate, they line the tunnels at the same time, and, um, and they're like an underground factory really. Both TBMs will operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and the machines will dig at an average rate of about nine metres a day. The longer tunnel, the, this one, the outbound tunnel, will take around 16 months to bore. C connecting to the TBM tunnels at each end is about 600 metres of cut and cover tunnel, which will transition from underground back up to the surface. So the, the TBMs incorporate a conveyor system which runs behind them and the conveyor system transport the excavated material from the TBM up to the northern portal and then over Somerville Road to our tunnelling hub which is on the corner of Somerville Road and Whitehall Street. From that point it will be loaded into trucks and trucked to a disposal site. At the end of its journey the TBM will, will break through uh, the head wall which you can see here. It will be it'll push itself out into the into the portal and then it will be uh, dismantled and taken taken out, craned out in pieces and uh, hopefully trucked off somewhere to live and bore another day on another project. Our original plan was to host a live Q&A session with you guys out on site but under the circumstances we had to change plans and so what we've done instead is we've um, scoured our social media for the most frequently asked questions from the community. We've also gone back and had a look at um, all the questions that we get at our community pop-up events and we're going to answer some of those for you now and hopefully they um, help with some answers to some of the burning questions you may have. Um, we still have some significant works coming up to complete the portal structure. Um, this includes the construction of the permanent structure after the TBM breaks through, uh, construction of the substation and the ventilation building above the roof level. Um, we also need to install the ventilation system, the big fans that are missing from those circular voids, the e installation of the eel net cladding and the architectural features of the road carriageways to form the exit from the tunnel. TBMs we have working at our tunnels are the biggest TBMs in the current, currently in the Southern Hemisphere. They have been designed in Germany, built in China and assembled in Melbourne. The tunnels are something I'm really passionate about because they enable us to in, improve infrastructure with, um, whilst also limiting the impacts to the community. So the tunnel allows a freeway connection to be built in an established commercial area or residential or industrial area with far fewer impacts and many benefits, like moving traffic through, um, moving traffic away from homes, reducing traffic noise and reducing trucks on local street. But when we're building tunnels, um, there'll, be, there'll be minimal disruption as the works happen below ground and support urban development opportunities by protecting land on the surface. At its deepest level, it gets as deep as 25 metres below the existing ground level. We have uh, round the clock operations, um, a crew of approximately 30 workers to man each shift around the clock to work in various roles. Um, they have received specialised training, including working in a hyperbaric chamber so that the crews can actually work under a pressurised condition when the specialised activity needs to take place at the cutter head. Um, the project actually has installed one of these chambers on site so that the workers can learn about how to work under these pressurised conditions. Um, the greatest, the biggest TBM in the Southern Hemisphere takes approximately three months to disassemble and retrieve from the breakthrough position. The Illnet design reflects Melbourne's Indigenous and maritime history through a structural and visual representation of the iconic Illnet. So the net will be made up of some highly durable laminated timber and it's modelled to metaphor metaphorically capture motorists as they enter the tunnel and release them as they exit. The shadow patterns created by the portal structure are also 
a modern expression of Aboriginal cross markings. So as part of the process, we consulted with Victorian Indigenous people during the development of the design for the Westgate Tunnel and undertook a detailed consultation with traditional owners to ensure the approach was culturally authentic and sensitive and appropriate. Yeah, it was recently announced that High Quality's Sunbury Eco Hub is a preferred site to manage and dispose of the tunnel soil. So it's a purpose-built facility designed to receive, manage and dispose of all the tunnel soil excavated by the TBMs. So the tunnel spoil will be tested, removed and transported and managed and disposed in a manner that minimises any risks to human health and the environment in accordance with the EPA regulations. So high quality's facility will be purpose built, so it's an existing facility but, it, but its expansion is purpose built to specifically manage low levels of PFAS detected in the tunnel soil and it will meet the strict conditions imposed by the EPA to ensure all environmental risks are addressed and the community is protected at the end of the day. We're working to get the tunnelling started as soon as possible. So before tunnelling can commence, High Quality needs to prepare its facility to safely manage the rock and soil excavated by the tunnel boring machines. Now, thousands of people have been working around the clock and we're making excellent progress as we widen the Westgate Freeway from 8 to 12 lanes and build the city connections, part of the job. But um, in, terms of starting, in terms of starting and finishing the tunnel, we need to get high quality site uh, expanded in order so that we can start the TBMs. Thanks everyone for joining us out on site virtually on the Westgate Tunnel Project. It's great to um, have been able to, to virtually show you around and give you a bit of a behind the scenes of, of one of our great sites at the uh, tunnel exit portal. Thanks guys for joining us today on this session. Um, we hope you enjoy the footage that we have shown you today. Um, and we are excited to see you out on site again at a later date. Stay safe everyone. Thanks guys. See you next time.